I'm Danny Epperson and I'm inside the dazzling Commodore Dinner Theater in downtown Portsmouth. Thanks for joining me for WHRO Cinema 15 and our presentation of the 1954 musical masterpiece, A Star is Born. It doesn't take long into this film to realize that Judy Garland was born to play the lead in A Star is Born. Sid Luft pitched the idea for a musical remake of 1937's A Star is Born with his wife Judy Garland in the lead role. George Cukor, famous for dozens of hit comedies, leapt at the opportunity to direct his first Technicolor film, his first musical, and the chance to direct the multi-talented Judy Garland. A Star is Born tells the story of an unlikely romance between two people at different points in their careers. James Mason is Norman Maine, a Hollywood leading man who literally stumbles into the arms of up-and-coming singer Esther Blagé, played by Garland. Was I on key? I couldn't hear a thing. He sees something special in her and puts her on the fast track to fame. The film is a tour de force for Garland. Time Magazine said it best in 1954 when they wrote that Garland, quote, gives what is just about the greatest one-woman show in modern movie history. She sings, she dances, and the emotional performance she gives at the end of this picture is one of the most authentic in movie history. A Star is Born was nominated for six Academy Awards, including Best Actress, Best Actor, and Best Song. Unfortunately, it didn't take home any Oscars. A stunned Judy Garland lost to Grace Kelly. Garland's friend Groucho Marx called the upset the greatest robbery since Brinks. Judge for yourself. I'll be back after the movie to explain why this version of the film was aired at a special 1983 screening and had Judy Garland's two daughters crying tears of joy. For now, hit the lights and get ready for A Star is Born. Judy Garland was simply amazing. She made such an impact on movies and entertainment it's hard to believe she was just 47 years old when she passed away in 1969. The original A Star is Born was three hours long when it premiered in 1954. Despite great reviews and ticket sales, Warner Brothers felt pressure to shorten it so that movie houses could add an extra showing. The studio pulled it from theaters and edited 30 minutes from the feature without the director's consent. Audiences and critics were outraged by the cuts and attendance plummeted. The film cost over $5 million, which at the time made it one of Hollywood's most expensive movies. In part because of the backlash, it took decades for it to turn a profit. The studio didn't just cut some of the footage, they actually destroyed it. In the early 1970s, a film historian spent close to a decade piecing together the original soundtrack with lost footage and still photos. He reassembled a version that was as close as possible to George Cukor's creation. We just watched that restored film. When it was screened at Radio City Music Hall on July 7, 1983, the audience gave it a standing ovation. And it took Garland's two daughters, Liza Minnelli and Lorna Luft, 20 minutes to stop crying. As much as critics have hailed the original 1954 film as a masterpiece, that hasn't stopped filmmakers from wanting to retell the story of A Star is Born for new generations. In 1976, producers John Peters and Barbara Streisand remade it with Streisand as the lead and Chris Christopherson as a washed up rock star. And coming soon to theaters, Bradley Cooper directs and stars with Lady Gaga in the latest rebirth of A Star Is Born. That's all I have for this week. I'm Danny Epperson, and I'll see you next time for WHRO Cinema 15 and another classic movie.